The Tucker Tynan Injury. How this hockey player cheated death on the ice rink. Hey everybody, Dr. Chris, orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine physician. Welcome to my channel, your number one source for information on orthopedic injuries and broken bones that's simple to understand for the common man. That's a little doctor joke we like to make around here. Tucker Tynan is a goaltender for the OHL team, the Niagara Ice Dogs. He was injured on December 12th of 2019 in a game versus the London Knights. Tucker Tynan was injured during the second period where he suffered a life-threatening injury. And I do mean life-threatening. This really, really could have been bad. At the time that he was injured, two players collided in front of the net, directly in front of Tucker, and then continued to slide into Tucker in the net. Tucker suffered an injury to his right thigh and was immediately unable to get up. He remained on the ice for nearly 10 minutes receiving medical attention from the trainers of both teams before he was taken from the ice and transported to the hospital where he underwent emergency surgery. Tucker suffered a laceration on his inner right thigh from a skate that slid underneath of his pads. And if we watch the video, we can see the exact moment when this occurred. And looking more closely at a set of typical pro goalie pads, we can see the exact area where this might be possible. While being treated on the ice, Tucker lost a significant amount of his blood volume. However, he did not lose consciousness and he remained oriented during the whole ordeal. If we consider the anatomy for a moment, the femoral artery is the main blood vessel of the lower extremity and it travels down the inside of the thigh underneath the sartorius and the quadricep muscles. When Tucker was struck by the skate blade, he suffered a full thickness laceration to the quadricep muscle at the level of the mid thigh. This in and of itself is already a problem. Had he also suffered a laceration or a tear to the femoral artery, it would have been so much worse. Fortunately, he was lucky to have avoided a laceration to his femoral artery. After having suffered a fracture of the femur or a laceration of the quadricep muscle, it is possible to lose between one to two liters of blood into the thigh compartment after this type of injury. The amount of blood loss that is possible after a laceration to the femoral artery is incredible and can be fatal. The typical blood volume in an average sized male is 12 pints or five liters for all of you people who follow the metric system. Exsanguination or bleeding out from the femoral artery can occur in a very, very short period of time. And by short, I mean in seconds to minutes. You could bleed your entire blood volume out of your femoral artery were it to be lacerated. Consequently, immediate control of any bleeding that would occur from a femoral artery laceration or tear is of the utmost importance. Immediate treatment of a femoral artery tear or laceration includes either the application of a tourniquet proximal to the site of the injury or the application of pressure proximal to the site of the injury in order to control the flow of blood. And all this really means is that you need to stop the flow of blood before the point of the injury so that none of the blood leaks out the injury. If you are unable to use the tourniquet, then the amount of pressure that is required to be applied is formidable. And, and I just mean it's, it's a lot. Studies have shown that the application of between 80 to 140 pounds of pressure in the abdomen or 80 to 120 pounds of pressure at the level of the groin are sufficient to stop the flow of blood from a injury in the femoral artery, downstream, like in the leg. This just basically means that if you see this happen to somebody, you need to knee that person in the gut or in the groin pretty much as hard as you can with all of your body weight. That's how much pressure is required 
to stop the flow of blood from a laceration in the femoral artery. Fortunately, he was lucky to have avoided a laceration to his femoral artery. He was stabilized on the ice and he was transported to the hospital quickly where he underwent emergency surgery. In general, the treatment of his wound would include administration of tetanus toxoid, administration of antibiotics, and then an irrigation and a debridement of the injury itself. And this just means that the medical team would ensure that his tetanus status was up to date, make sure that he received antibiotics to prevent infection, and made sure that the wound was cleaned to remove any contaminants or dirt or any necrotic and dead tissue. Were he also to have suffered a femoral artery laceration or rupture, then this would be followed by an end-to-end -end anastomosis of the femoral artery. And this just means that we would be repairing the torn or ruptured blood vessel by sewing it together end to end. The muscle, on the other hand, would not be repaired. Have you ever tried to sew steak together? Can you imagine that? It doesn't really work. That would be allowed to heal through scarring and the subsequent metaplasia or the transformation of scar tissue into muscle fibers after he had undergone appropriate rehabilitation and healing. The laceration itself would be closed in a layered fashion with a watertight closure. And this just means that we would sew the skin together layer by layer to ensure that no blood could get out and no fluid or germs could get in. The news reported that Tucker had successfully undergone surgery at the hospital. He was kept in hospital for a day or two following his surgery to ensure that there were no complications and to complete the administration of antibiotics. If all goes well and there are no complications, we can expect that Tucker will return to normal activities and likely return to playing hockey at some point in the future. We can expect his lower extremity function to be normal and hopefully he'll return to the Niagara Ice Dogs as the goaltender once everything is all said and done. So there you have it. Today I've been reacting to the Tucker Tynan injury and explaining why this hockey player cheated death on the ice rink. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And look out for membership options coming to this channel soon. As always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday ortho. The flesh wound.